This is Twit. All right, we are back from the break, and that means it's time for our next guest joining us from Gizmodo. It's Florence Ion. Hello, Flo. Hi, Mike. I'm doing well. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. I'm doing well. I hope you are getting lots of um, vitamin C and sun and whatever else you need before you head to CES. (laughs) Not getting sun, but I'm definitely trying to be horizontal as much as I can before I have to be vertical. Good, good. I like that. That's good. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, you know what? I uh, there was there's a segue in there somewhere. I guess TVs go vertically on your wall, so maybe that's the segue. Anyway, um, <laughs> I happened across your piece uh, the other day about Roku entering the Pro Series market, and I just want to learn about this because Roku, for the longest time, has kind of been um, the alternate to the Apple TV. When someone's asking me for a recommendation mm-hmm. for a set-top box, I have tended to uh, suggest that they get a Roku box. But over yeah. time, Roku has uh, created uh, televisions and uh, you know, at one point was just kind of like being built into televisions made by other... I mean, they've kind of done it all. But now they've got TVs. To, let's start by talking about this new lineup um, and what folks can expect in terms of size and the technology that's built in before we get into AI, which is also involved. Oh my gosh, yes. AI is the big buzzword of the of 2024, right? <laughs> I mean, it started last year. Um, we're going to see a lot of it at CES, but first, so you know, there's a new selection of Roku Pro TVs that are going to debut this spring. We don't have like the exact time frame just yet, but we know they're coming out. So Roku's like, save your money. <laughs> the good news is that you won't have to save a ton of money because these TVs are all going to be under $1,500, oh. which is... Again, Roku going after its primo like customer base. When I think of Roku, I think of the brand that I can go to a Walmart or a Target and buy. I don't think about, you know, going to like a really specialized tech store or something of the sort. I don't think about going to a brand. I think about Roku is the one you can buy right off the shelf. And I think that's kind of what they're going for. They're going to be offering three sizes a 55 inch, a 65 inch and a 75 inch. So pretty standard for like the living room TV, the big kahuna that you have in the house to watch everything on. And, um, They've also got some pretty good like tech in it. They're all going to be 4K Q OLED, Q OLED, QLED, QLED, QLED. I'm just gonna leave it at that. They've also got mini LED, mini LED backlighting. Um, so there's going to be like really rich, you know, they're promising rich contrast, rich colors, like kind of the same experience that you would get with a high end TV that you would buy on the other side of the aisle at Target. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Far aisle. When you look this side and you see those really expensive ones, you look this way and you see, but now yeah. you can get that even in these, um, these less expensive options. And like, uh, I have a, uh, TCL Roku TV that I bought a long time ago. I also do. And mm-hmm. I was always impressed with the quality of the display, even for that, you know, it, it offered all of the rich blacks and, uh, everything else that was involved um, of course, it didn't have the QLED and the, the mini LED, everything that it has now. But I guess what I'm saying is it, this company seems to have a pretty good track history of being more budget while still maintaining uh, high quality. And you mentioned uh, kind of a comparison to the Samsung frame. Tell us about that. I did. Um, well, I so first of all, I also want to say just about that TCL TV. I was very, you know, it's been very interesting to see what Roku is doing in the tiniest packages, right? Mm -hmm. In or I should say, with the most affordable packages, Um, they they're going to basically what they were doing with this particular uh, the Roku Pro is that they're making them so that they're more flush against the wall, and it's very much in my mind a playbook from the Samsung design. Mm -hmm. team because the frame became very popular because it was a TV that didn't look like a TV. The frame does have some extra bits about it that makes it so that, you know, it's like a piece of art in your living room when you're not watching it. Roku doesn't claim the same thing, but I thought it to be a very similar strategy. Like, hey, this is something that you're going to not have to pay a lot of money for, but you're still going to be able to just kind of like put it flush on the wall. It's going to look good. It's going to look as high end as the name promises it to be. 
Got it. Got it. Now, let's talk about the AI because this is, I think it's going to be controversial. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this because it tends to be that the uh, movie nerds, the, the, the TV nerds, whatever you want to call them, the media nerds, visual media nerds, all want to turn off all the sort of motion smoothings and the uh, special features that, that change the color of the picture. Now we're throwing in AI for the picture. What, what's involved here? I actually don't think this is going to be as, I want to say troublesome mm. as maybe folks are feeling about it because I know the AI, the word AI is invoking a lot right now. It's a really loaded terminology. It's going to be used in all sorts of marketing this year, but it does use artificial intelligence to figure out what content you're playing on screen. So from the way they explained it, it sounds like, again, because these aren't out yet, nobody's tested them. It sounds like it's going to read into like the metadata of the content you're watching and maybe like seeing what resolution it's at, if maybe you have any external audio sources connected or something like that. So my understanding is that it is going to adjust based on all that criteria, but it is not to make your life a headache. It's for the folks who are going to Walmart and Target and buying the Roku Got off it. the shelf and want this premium pro experience but you know they don't necessarily want to pay for it and also this just roku's idea is to continue being like user friendly uh -huh. the user friendly brand and while apple is like a very premium brand whenever you think apple you think god that's expensive like that's you know but that's the best of the best so to speak roku is more like hey anybody can buy us and bring us home yeah and uh, they're really, um, they're, they've touted a lot the fact that they are like the number one platform, streaming platform in the US and Canada. Oh, wow. So it's clear. And this was all, by the way, I looked at, uh, you know, different um, uh, analyst surveys and things like that yesterday while I was looking this up. And it's, they're still reigning supreme among US and Canada. So I think they're trying to ensure that they stay in that competitive edge by just offering something that anybody can access. So, It'll be interesting to see how they implement it, but I don't think it's as scary as, you know, the word AI has been in the last couple of months. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think you you make a really good point. This is not for the folks who buy that special Blu-ray that they put into their external Blu-ray player that plays back color bars on the screen and they do all of these adjustments to everything. This is Because for they probably have a 7.1 surround exactly. system. They have... Maybe they've got the whole Sono set up with AirPlay compatibility. You know, maybe that's yeah, <laughs> the realm. They, they're doing it all. And this is for folks who want to get, uh, you know, th set it and forget it, right? This is this is the folks that just want to be able to bring it home, like you said, and be able to, to use it. I, I, I'm even that person. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I'm that person even as like a tech head myself. Mm -hmm. I am just, I just want to sit down and watch TV. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I, I think the one thing that, made me a little bit suspicious about this part. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts is when you mentioned that the way that the AI is working is by not just looking at um, the TV settings, but also looking at the metadata that makes me feel like it is a good way for Roku to keep you using uh, the, to, to turn on this feature Oh, let me, how, how do I word this? We know that televisions uh, are, especially budget televisions are often subsidized through the use of monitoring what you're watching and sending that data off as part of kind of like a data package. And I do wonder if this is going to be kind of like, the, here's an incentive. We know that people are being a little bit more privacy minded these days. They're not connecting their televisions to the internet as much anymore. They're using, you know, an external box, but if you want to use these special features that, yes, are reading what you're watching, but they also pack in this feature that can make the picture look better. I'm kind of curious if that's going to end up being the case. Again, I know you don't have, um, that no one has access to these televisions yet, and we don't know exactly how these features will work. But whenever you said metadata, that kind of popped up in my head there. That um, Well, and I said metadata because they mentioned that they were working with their content partners. And you know, when you log on to Roku, you've got all that stuff on the front page, mm -hmm. which they update a lot. And that's where 
I'm imagining some of that subsidy comes from as well. Ah, it's just like true. who's featured on that front page. Yep. Uh, because I mean, Google's doing it too with Google TV. Uh, Apple TV has been more, a little quieter. Yeah. About things of that realm, but it's all about like, what can we surface you? So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what they do. I hope, I hope they're good to us. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. The last question I have for you is, um, now that we know that Roku is making its own line of these pro series TVs, can we still expect to see uh, TCL Roku TV or some other with uh, Roku built into it? Or is Roku moving out of that space? I would. I'm so I am not sure because I haven't, you know, this is a good question to ask Roku, but I am imagining that that is not going to go away mm -hmm. because from what I've seen in the TV industry for the last decade, it seems to be all about just kind of throwing it all out there and seeing what people buy. And that kind of helps the propagation of these platforms because it just feels like a more is better strategy. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That makes no, sense. But Roku does have its own manufacturing partners that it, it works with, you know, on these TVs as, you know, as TCL does as well. So It'll be interesting. I'm very curious to see. We shall see. Well, Flo, I want to thank you so much for taking some time today to join us. I'm wishing you uh, safe and happy travels. Uh, and thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing your work over on Gizmodo uh, post CES or during CES or however you're going to be doing that this year. Uh, so, of course, <laughs> folks can head to gizmodo.com uh, to check out your work. Is there anywhere they should go to keep up with what you're doing online? Uh, yes, actually, I would like to plug up my little podcast that I have with Andy and Notco um, yes. on the on the Relay FM network. It's called Material. So if you're interested in what we have to say about Google and Android, that's the podcast to listen to. Wonderful. Thank you for having me, Micah. Yeah, thank you so much <laughs> for your time today. And I appreciate you joining us despite the internet woes. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.